Hello and good morning friends welcome to the CCA Reset live lecture dear friends as you know that we are carrying a series on history of English literature and so far we have conducted 23 lectures under the series and all the lectures are uploaded for you on YouTube for your accessibility so you can go through the lectures and afterwards you can give your feedback. So carrying the series forward today we would be talking on uh, modern novels. We would be covering uh, modern novels in uh, two sessions. In first half we would be discussing on uh, early phase whereas uh, in the next session we would be talking on later phase and for this very discussion we have uh, once again with us in our studios Professor Bheem Singh Dahiya. Professor Bheem Singh Dahiya is a, a world renowned uh, professor and uh, I would say that uh, his uh, books uh, are appreciated by students, his teachings uh, are admired by all. So dear friends, let's welcome uh, our guest Professor Bheem Singh Dahiya under whose able guidance we would be discussing on uh, modern novel. Hello sir, welcome to the Edisette lecture. Thank you. Well, in this lecture we shall discuss um, modern novel, modern English novel and uh, as usual the British are notoriously conservative. So nothing new begins there. They only catch up later. As we look back in history, all the literary movements, uh, they came from around England. They did not germinate did not originate in England, mostly in France, in Germany, even in Italy or Scandinavia. Mainly the sources were France and Germany. So all the new movements in liter literature started there. And it was later that the English caught up with the new trends and adopted those trends. The same happened with the novel also. Novel as we know did not originate in England. Actually it had originated in Spain. And the first novel, 1707, was Don Quixote. It was later that on the pattern of Don Quixote, we had novels by, say, Henry Fielding, Joseph Andrews, very much modeled on the same. So it is this way that uh, the innovations in literature always traveled from the neighboring uh, languages, maybe French, maybe German, or at times still distant ones. Here in this particular case of the novel, uh, we find that the English novel, so-called, actually was uh, begun by outsiders. They came and settled in England and they started uh, uh, the new kind of novel. Two important names, because we are talking of modern novel not novel as such, because novel as such had begun in the 18th century. But modern novel comes almost 200 years after that. So we are talking of the early 20th century. That is where the modernist period begins, around the time of World War I, 1914 to 1919. During those very years or immediately thereafter, 
we have modernist literature coming in every form we have seen poetry now we'll see how novel followed and then of course drama but today we are concerned with the modern novel so the first two names that come to mind when we think think of modern english novel are joseph conrad and henry james now both were outsiders joseph conrad came from poland henry james came from america but then both settled in england and they became uh, british citizens they adopted england as their own country joseph conrad did that in 1894 and henry james had done it even earlier 1875 so 1875 and 1894 respectively henry james and joseph conrad formally became british citizens and they were the leading novelists of the modern form now what was this modern form because before the modern novel or modernist novel we had the victorian novel early victorians later victorians you know early victorians charles dickens even before that uh, not really jane austen charles dickens was the main and then thackeray so dickens and thackeray in the early phase and in the later george eliot and hardy these were the two phases of the victorian novel represented by these twins two twins similarly the modern novel in english is also represented by similar kind of combinations so the first ones who initiated modern novel in english were joseph conrad and henry james henry james had reached england earlier from america and had adopted this country he became the british citizen in 1875 conrad did the same later in 1894 he also became the british citizen citizen and both settled there and both wrote in english and both were pioneers of the modern novel now what is modern about this modern novel which is different from the victorian novel well the victorian novel was entertaining storytelling largely a long narrative so long that uh, the critics used to say that it is a baggy monster is a huge bag like thing in which you can put anything and everything hence formless 
it does not have any definite form nor is it conscious of itself. So, it may grow into any size, not conscious of its own form. It was this impression about the Victorian novel and we know that. We pick up any novel by say Dickens, the very first novel, Pickwick Papers, In Pickwick Papers, single novel, you know there are 356 characters. You can't even remember the names. Generally, it is a story involving 3, 4, 5, maximum 10 characters. But here in this very first novel by Dickens, you have 356. The novel is called Pickwick Papers. And then Dickens wrote several, over two dozen novels, each longer than the other, each having more and more characters. So, that is what the Victorian novelists were there. Thackeray did the same. In Thackeray's novels again, you have large number of characters. So, it is rightly called the baggy monster. Like a huge bag, put anything and everything in it. So, formless. Formlessness was one of the aspects of the Victorian novel. So, the first thing these modernists did was, they declared that novel is an art form and it has to be as self-conscious as poetry is about itself or drama is about itself. It has to have form and therefore, it has to have rules of construction. It must know what it is like and it should be conscious of its form, that the form should be impressive just like the human body. So, if you are conscious, you will take care that nothing hangs loose. Everything is in its place and well adjusted and well adjusted with each other also. <coughs> in other words, both Conrad and James insisted that the novel must be a self-conscious art and it must have an organic form where each part is related to another and all forming one whole, organic whole. So, this organic structure in which all parts ultimately form one, you see single whole, organically related to each other. So, they were great artists and theorists also. That is why for the first time, you have practicing novelists who are creating the narratives, the fiction in literature. At the same time, they are giving us the theory of the novel. 
E. M. Foster, for example, wrote Aspects of the Novel, which comes a little later. Aspects of the Novel. What are the different aspects? He says there is a story, there is a plot, there is character, there is language, and plot must have beginning, middle, and end. Then what is a beginning? What is an end? What is middle? All these details are described in those theoretical writings. Henry James wrote several theoretical pieces. Conrad wrote, later E. M. Foster wrote. So all these modern novelists, they were consciously making novel an art form. And an art which should be as self-conscious about itself as poetry and drama are. It should not be a baggy monster. It should not be formless. It should not be ashamed of its own form. So that was the contribution of these modern novelists. And the key figures, the pioneers, the beginners in this were Joseph Conrad and Henry James. And as I said, both outsiders, because the British are notoriously conservative. They don't easily change. They don't easily move from their position. It is others who have to move them. So these writers, creators of the new novel, they came to England, settled there. They were non-British, non-English speaking, but then finally they learnt English also. And they wrote in English. Henry James, of course, being an American, uh, it was uh, his language. But then there is a difference between the American English and the British English. He settled in England, learnt the British English and wrote in that, not in American. Earlier in the American phase, he had written in the American English also. The portrait of a lady, for example. That's of the American phase. That's an American novel. One of the American classics, I would say. So, there you will see the difference. But then, his British novels, like The Tragic News, 1890, The Awkward Age, 1899, The Wings of the Dove, 1902, the Ambassadors, 1903, The Golden Bowl, 1904. All these novels, they belong to the English phase of Henry James, not the American. And they are included in the history of English literature, not American literature. And he was a major modern novelist in England at that time. 
Hence, these novels. Now, what is peculiar about these novels? In his American novels, the story, the plot, the situation, the character, all came from the American context. But here in these novels of the English phase, we have international situations. In Henry James's novels, largely international situations, neither American nor British. It may be England, it may be Germany, France, Italy, any place around that, any place on the continent. Generally, the novels have international situations. So this was another peculiar feature of the modern novel in English, which began, as I said, with Conrad and James. Of course, they were the beginners and not the radical beginners. They did not, you see, uh, reject tradition altogether. The Victorian practices in the English novel, they did not discard one and all. They discarded some, but they also retained a good deal, both Conrad and James. For example, their method of storytelling is the same, very much Victorian in a way. It may not be entertaining like that. It may be more self-conscious. It may be a more serious affair. It may have the larger international context. But the basics of storytelling, the basics of the narrative are there, both in James and Conrad. I named these novels by James, The Tragic Muse, The Awkward Age, The Wings of the Dove, The Ambassadors, and The Golden Bowl. Similarly, Joseph Conrad wrote several novels in English and of the English phase. They are The Nigger of Narcissus, 1887, Lord Jim, more famous, 1900, and still more famous, <coughs> sorry, The Heart of Darkness, generally prescribed in the university syllabi. The Heart of Darkness, 1902. The Nostromo, 1904. And Under Western Eyes, 1911. One thing common about James and Conrad is that although both writing in English, because they are outsiders, both brought to the English novel international plots, international situations, international characters, and hence international outlook. You can't really say that in their novels it is the British or the conservative outlook which is projected now. 
So, their contribution is that as against the conservative outlook, as against the conservative plots, we have international outlook, a broadening of the canvas, broadening of the horizons of the mind, outlook. So, that was a great contribution they made to the English novel. The English novel now is no longer confined to the English life as it was say with Henry Fielding. It was totally confined to or Jane Austen. It was entirely confined to the English life, English situations, English characters, English outlook. So, the world was confined to the English territories, but now there is an opening up. England gets a very small space in that international canvas. So, you have a larger canvas in the novels of both Henry James and Joseph Conrad. And that is their contribution, a sort of internationalism, a broadening of the canvas, broadening of the horizon, making it truly international, crossing the boundaries, going beyond the national boundaries. So, great contribution. And that enriched the English novel. It is no longer a local thing. It is no longer confined to the small boundaries of the nation. So, that was done by, by these two outsiders, Joseph Conrad and Henry James. Joseph Conrad had more experience of Africa. Whereas, Henry James had more experience of America. So, when you go into the interior of these two different worlds they are picturing, <coughs> sorry, you find that in Conrad, you have African plots, Congo for example. He had seen that. He had travelled to those places. So, in a way, they are also adding to the novel this dimension of the travelogue. So, along with storytelling of the novel, you have the travel book material also in it. So, that is the early phase of the English novel. We will continue the story later, the second phase. Okay, thank you.
Well, to continue the story of uh, the modern English novel, uh, we come now to the second generation, so to say, or the next group of novelists who carry the growth, the development of the modern English novel further. As I said, the beginning was uh, the beginning was made by Henry James and Joseph Conrad. The now the next pair of novelists to come on the scene and carry it further, develop it still further, are Ford Maddox Ford and E. M. Foster. Spellings are F O R S T E R, but it is pronounced Foster, not Forrester. So E. M. Foster. Ford Maddox Ford, his years are born 1873 and lived up to 1939, the notorious year you would remember when World War II began. So lived right up to the beginning of World War II, 1873 to 1939. And E. M. Foster, born a little later, 1879 but lived for a longer period until 1970, imagine 91 years, from 1879 to 1970. And Foster has an India connection also by the way. We will take up their works later. But uh, I must add this, that there is a strong India connection that E. M. Foster had. He was an employment of one of the Indian kings in Madhya Pradesh. He was secretary to the king. And he worked for many, many years here, more than two decades, maybe three. So he remained in Indian employment. That is why he knew so much about India. Of course, an outsider will always remain an outsider. That is why in A Passage to India, his famous novel, you will find there are many errors of perception about Hindus, about Muslims, about the relationship between the two communities. Being an outsider, he is not really able to go into the depth of uh, the, the, the cultures of these two communities. What we do get in a passage to India is a superficial, an outsider's view of things. As an Englishman, he remains an outsider and therefore his impressions are the outsider's impressions, doesn't really know the inside of either one community or of another. That is the flaw in a passage to India, which you and I can see. 
the British will not see. They will read it as something authentic about India. But we know it is an outsider's view. It is all right as a travel guide for the British, but not for us. So we don't take it as a very great work of art. A passage to India. In reaction to this, some Indians also wrote, like Nirad Chaudhary. He wrote several books, Passage to England. So the Indians going to England or the British coming to India, this phenomenon is modern. Of course, it has always been there. But during the modern times, it got accelerated <coughs> and tremendous acceleration took place because the means of communication became much faster, much sophisticated. Technology rapidly developed. You had airplanes. Earlier you used to go by ship and it will take months to reach from India to England. By air, matter of four hours. So that difference was made by the modern conditions. Hence, the whole change in outlook and placement of these novels in the larger tradition of the English novel. So you have Ford Maddox Ford who and E. M. Foster. E. M. Foster, as I said, wrote, Where Angels Fear to Tread. 1905, Howard's End, 1910, A Passage to India, 1924, and then that theoretical book, Aspects of the Novel, 1927, which we still read, a very useful, a relevant book. It tells you all about what is a novel. What are its ingredients? Like what is story? What is plot? What is character? What is language? What is beginning? What is ending? What is middle? So on and so forth. So all these technical aspects of the novel, these details, you get to know from that not very long book aspects of the novel. Rather short, slick, but very informative, knowledgeable, and worth uh, reading. That's why uh, it is generally prescribed in the novel course so that you get to know the basics of the novel. So that's the contribution by uh, E. M. Foster. Ford, Maddox Ford generally wrote about the war situation. He had seen the First World War and he had not forgotten that. He had experienced part of it. And that's why he had first-hand first knowledge. And writing, of course, is stronger and authentic, more authentic, when it is based on someone's personal experience. So Maddox, Ford Maddox Ford, had the experience of war. So his novels 
are strong in that field, in those locations about the world. Whereas Foster's novels are strong about international situations like the Indian, which he had known personally, which he had lived through for decades. So it is always an advantage with any writer to write about something that you have personally known, personally experienced, because that will bring about authenticity in your writing, strong realism. And that involves the reader, convinces him. The reader feels as if he is first hand watching, seeing those things. Otherwise, if it is purely fantastic, imaginative, things that have never happened and nor are likely to happen, so it remains a fantasy, dreamlike. So it doesn't really involve you to the extent an authentic account would. So both in Ford Maddox Ford and E. M. Foster, you have this in common that both write about international situations but situations which they have known and hence very convincing, very involving, so to say, very absorbing. Now, after these two, we have two more who were more modern because these early modern did not, as I said, uh, altogether kick off the traditional aspects of the novel. Conrad, Ford Med Oxford, E. M. Foster, Henry James, they continued with some of the traditional things uh, sharing with the Victorian novel. But at the same time, they introduced the new elements. So that, that is what always happens. That is always the case with anything new. Because it can't be altogether new. It can't be radically different from what there was. So the early phase is always a transition from one thing to another. So there will always be a link with the past and certain break with the past. Both are there. When you come to the next generation, the second phase, later phase, then you find that those links with the past, they are not there now, because it is within a new age, completely into the interior, and therefore cannot have those outside links. That difference is always there between the early phase and the later phase, or first generation of writers and the second generation of writers. So when, when you come to the second generation, like Virginia Woolf, James Joyce, you find that in both there is nothing of the Victorian tradition, the old way of storytelling, no, the old way of characterization, no the old way of uh, using 
conversational language no so all that is discarded by the second generation writers in the modern period of these modernists so in virginia woolf and james joyce you find all together new elements of the novel of storytelling it's not traditional it's not linear it's not straight from time past to the time present to the time future no that uh, that linearity now is gone what do you have instead now you have psychological novel highly influenced by the modern psychology like that of freud and jung so freud had given the theory of the conscious and the unconscious and the subconscious similarly these elements of the conscious unconscious and subconscious these new writers like virginia woolf and james joyce they brought into the narrative and hence transformed the traditional narrative in something altogether new so this is called psychological novel which virginia woolf did so psychology of the unconscious focusing more on what is happening inside your mind not what is happening outside in your life mrs dalloway for example or the other madam and to the lighthouse both have women characters as the central ones leading ones both of them they are doing the routine things of life but at the same time what the novelist is focusing upon what is going on in their minds as women what are they reflecting on which means the focus is on the personal and the private not on the public and the impersonal so instead of the pers- impersonal now you have personal instead of the public you have private now so a different kind of novel altogether james joyce the same psychological novel becomes interior monologue means each character talking to himself or herself there is a situation for example in ulysses where at bar you have several characters sitting each absorbed in his own mind thinking of different things although they are sitting together but sharing nothing they are having their own private worlds it is this kind of novel which became the modern novel nothing public all private nothing impersonal all personal no sharing so it has no social aspect which the victorian novel had because there you had the sharing of things sharing of life with other people so it was the shared experience which was the stuff of the novel or the narrative fiction 
during the Victorian age. Now there is nothing shared. It is purely individual, purely personal, purely private. So that is a great change that came about in the life of the modern man. Modern man after World War I is no longer a man of society, no longer a man of community. So whatever he does, whatever he says, is all his own, individual. He will not be speaking now onward on behalf of anyone else, not his community or society, nothing of this sort. So you have a very different sort of novel. Read a portrait of the artist as a young man by James Joyce or Ulysses. He portrays a modern Ulysses borrowed from the past Homer, then Tennyson. Now the third Ulysses you have here in James Joyce. Similarly, in Virginia Woolf. By the way, Virginia Woolf also introduces a new dimension to the novel, feminism, which was not there earlier. Although Jane Austen, George Eliot, they were great female novelists. But if you read their novels, you don't really see anything new compared to, say, in the novels by Dickens or Thackeray or Hardy, those male writers. Because the technique is the same, the stuff is the same, life is the same, shared one. But now in modern times, there is nothing shared. Each individual living his, her, entirely private life and in a world of his own. So Virginia Woolf rightly wrote a prose piece very famous which is now used as a document of feminism. And that document in prose is a room of one's own. One of the early feminist texts the emphasis is that woman also needs some privacy, some space of her own, some freedom of her own, and not always subsidiary to the male figure, first father, then husband, and so on than even your son. So always in the subsidiary position. So for the first time, Virginia Woolf raises that question in a room of one's own, that women do need for their whatever little freedom they are allowed, a room of their own. So room becomes symbolic there. You need a space of your own where you can feel free. You can feel yourself and not always tagged to someone else, a shadow, someone who has to follow someone else in every walk of life. So this feminist question very loudly for the first time was raised by 
Virginia Woolf in that document, A Room of One's Own. I think, thank you for the time being. Definitely, we would be meeting again and would be discussing more and more as uh, Professor Bhim Singh Daya himself said. So, dear friends, we would uh, like to keep watching uh, our lectures uh, which are uploaded on YouTube for you. This lecture is also going to be uploaded very soon. Please give your feedback uh, for the lecture that is the lecture series on history of uh, English literature. We would be meeting again very soon and for uh, contacting us, our email ID is info.cc at the rate and ic.in. With this note, thank you all. Thank you, sir.